The, the, the dying of the old self and the rebirth is like a snake shedding its skin. You ever watch a snake go on YouTube and watch a snake shedding its skin? It's actually very simple. The whole thing just rolls right off. Right? It just slithers right out of it. And you know what the snake does? It leaves that skin right there. And it goes off. Brand new. Brand new coat. Yo, Elliot. Yo, E, last week you spoke about dying to our old selves and formulating a new ego. What are some resourceful ways for us to go about this? Now, one of the things you got to understand is that we don't have to actually do this, <laughs> right? It's happening. What we got to do is get out of the way. You just watch children grow and you will begin to notice how they are one way right? I have four children, so I, wa I watch them, especially as they, be they go from, you know, being a child to being a teenager. They go from being one way to having a struggle with that way, having a struggle with themselves, to being, to, 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 to having new, a new sense of self, but also the death of an old self. And nature just does it to you. And the best way for, I've had, I have three daughters. And I'm watching the three of them go through it. The, the, uh, two of my daughters had struggled the most between the ages of, you know, 12 and then, you know, when they get off on the other side of things, you know, 11, 12, 13. One of my daughters was very smooth. And it was because she didn't engage too much in the, in the turmoil of the breakdown. She, did, she would have some issues, but she would let it go and she wouldn't try to fix it. She wouldn't try. She would just go with the flow. So my other children, they really take it personally and they re it really disturbs them and, and they're trying to fix it and they're trying to assert themselves and they're trying to make it happen and that's and then they struggle. They have, they have a hard time with it. And it's just their nature. Everybody's different. But if you recognize that by going with the flow, when your ego starts to dissolve, when things start changing around you in your life, you're, you're in a much better place than if you're trying to uh, actively force it or actively destroy it or try to make something happen life will show you exactly what you need to let go of and exactly what you need to grow into if you pay attention to life you recognize that you're being asked to let go of something right a certain way of being that no longer is resourceful to you you begin to recognize hey you know what i used to do this i used to like this but it's not giving me what I want anymore. Maybe there's another way. And just by paying attention, not by knowing any esoteric, mind-blowing, mystical magic, just paying attention, you begin to recognize, oh, maybe there's a better way to do this. Maybe there's a better way for me to speak with people. Maybe there's a better way for me to go about these uh, the, these challenges, right? And so by and by, you're literally just putting aside, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a struggle, it doesn't have to be a fight. I guess the reason why my daughters have a struggle in a fight because I struggle in a fight. I fight with myself. They just take after their dad. I fight with myself. But it's been through all the fights that I had with myself <laughs> that I discovered, fighting with myself don't get you anywhere except frustrated. Fight with yourself, don't get you anywhere. Just paying attention and, and lightly letting go, letting go of old things, letting go of old ideas, letting go of things that no longer are sourceful to you. Easily, no attachment. And then just growing into what's next. The whole process is actually very smooth. The whole thing is actually very smooth. There's not much that you need to do. The, the, the dying of the old self and the rebirth is like a snake shedding its skin. You ever watch a snake go on YouTube and watch a snake shedding its skin? It's actually very simple. The whole thing just rolls right off, right? It just slithers right out of it. And you know what the snake does? It leaves that skin right there and it goes off. Brand new, brand new coat. It's the same for us. I think that's a part of the reason why in maybe in, in, in lots of mythology and different cultures, the snake is so symbolic in that way because it sheds its skin. 
Like it just sheds its old skin. There's no, there, there's nothing. It's not like the butterfly, right? Butterfly goes through all kinds of internal struggle, right? He, he, that, that, that uh, caterpillar has to like turn in on itself and wrap itself up, mummify itself, become that chrysalis, right? And then in there, it's like all kinds of enzymes and transmutation. But the, but on the outcome, whoa, it's beautiful, right? As they come out with those big those big, beautiful uh, wings. But now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm saying it, it's still a passive process. That caterpillar is not doing anything, right? God just puts him into that, into that chrysalis. It just naturally wraps itself around him, right? It just happens. And if you don't interfere with it, and he don't interfere with it, by and by that thing cracks open, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's a butterfly. We know too much. <laughs> I hate to say it because I'm right there with you guys. But I think a part of the problem that we have right now in our culture and as men is that we know too much. And we and we and because when you have knowledge, you become dangerous. I know I become so dangerous to myself the more knowledge I have. Because when you have knowledge, you think you you think you're in control and you think you could do something about it, right? Knowledge knowledge is Knowledge is a, is a trick. It tricks us, right? Because it, it doesn't allow us to be, right? And if we're talking about, right, the king program, king, warrior, magician, lover, the king is about being. The, the magician is the trickster. And the trickster will trick the crap out of you, will trick yourself, asking too many questions, getting too much information, trying to engage too much. Some things is better if we just, if we just let it be and we go with the flow. And before you know, is a brand new yo, and that's uh, that's as simple as it can be, and it should be. I'm just reading your uh, comment here, bro. So he says, um, so it's just a matter of allowing it to show, and the transformation will take care of itself. Yes, transformation will always take care of itself. Awareness is transformative in and of itself. This is one of the most powerful things that I've, I've discovered. A lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm denigrating knowledge for a moment, but it's not even the knowledge that's, that's the, that uh, destroys us. It's the, thing, it's the fact that we think we need to do something with the knowledge. It's the fact that we think that, oh, I'm in control now because I know something that we get in our own way. Sometimes knowledge or awareness, just by mere virtue of knowing, is transformative. You, right. You can't unknow it. And if you can't unknow it, you can't respond. You can't not respond to it. Right. And so a lot of times just knowing, just paying attention. That's why I said pay attention. Just pay attention. And a lot of things will just take care of itself naturally. It just naturally takes care of itself. Life should be natural. Life has become very unnatural. And so we're using you know, very unnatural ways to live our life and it becomes confusing for us. But life should just be natural. Life should just be normal and easy. <laughs> when I say that, I mean, I don't mean that there should be any struggles, but you don't have to do anything. Right. It just it, life is going to show you where you need to go. I was listening to a podcast yesterday with Chris Duffin. You guys know who Chris Duffin is? He's a strength coach. He was on Mark Bell's podcast and he was talking about how he had such a hard life, a struggle, he struggled everywhere in his life. He was like homeless and he mentioned child trafficking. He mentioned a whole bunch of stuff. But this guy, he just he just took what was given to him. And he did the best that he could. And he turns out that he's a genius and he's one of the strongest men in the world right now. And it was simply because, and he, the way he describes his life and how it unfolds, he seems so aloof. He's like, I don't even know what happened. I don't know how that happened. I turned around one day and I realized, hmm, I'm actually good at this, right? He was just paying attention. Now, you also ask, when I say, eat your shadows, because you asked about eating the shadows, I mean, how can we become aware of our tendencies and how to overcome a craving, a negative emotion, or pain. Once again, it's the same thing. When you become aware of those tendencies, the overcoming of them is almost natural, right? I'm gonna go quote Osho right now. He in his book, he's got a little book. He's got these little books. He's got this little book called Awareness. 
And in the book, he opens up with a poem, a little story, and he talks about a guy who's walking around with a sack of rocks, right? He's just carrying his, big, you know, just imagine like a, a Santa Claus sack, right? But maybe he's not red, it's brown. And he's carrying his, he's, he's just been carrying his sack of rocks over his shoulders, a heavy sack of rocks. And he's just been carrying it for years, right? Everywhere he goes, he just picks it up, boom. And one day somebody asks him, say, hey, bro, what you got in that sack? And he goes, well, you know what? I don't remember. I don't know what I have in here. And he take off the sack, he opens it up, and he was like, there's just some big rocks in here. There's just big, un unvaluable stones. There's, there's nothing of any value in here. But because he's been carrying it all along, he just suits it back up, puts it back on his shoulder, and he goes, hmm, okay, well. And he starts walking a little bit further, and he's thinking, and he's like, I got stones in here. There's no value in these rocks. Hmm. And he walks a little bit further, and then he just goes like this, boom, and left it. Nobody told him what to do. Nobody said, called him a name and said, you stupid. He didn't, have to, he didn't have to have a philosophical debate on it. He didn't need any special mystical knowledge about it. He didn't need anything except for somebody to say, hey, you know you got some rocks in that bag, right? That guy didn't even have to tell him, drop that bag. He didn't even have to say, drop that bag. You got a big old bag of heavy rocks for no reason. What are you, dumb? He didn't have to say that. He just said, hey, hey, check out what you got in that bag. There's rocks. <laughs> okay. And you walk away. So a lot of times our you know, negative tendencies, people don't even recognize their own tendencies. But if you begin to recognize it, you begin to see it, and you begin to see how, it, uh, how it, it's, a, it's a heavy weight in your life, by and by it's just going to drop away. Right. Even with negative, you say uh, how to overcome negative emotion or pain. Granted that you're not a masochist. Right. Because you got to understand something that a lot of times we do things that hurt us because of the benefit of the hurt. A lot of people unknowingly like to be victims. Right. And granted that that's not you, because a lot of people you say, how do I get rid of this negative emotion? Right. And how to transform this negative emotion. Some people don't want to get rid of their negative emotion because what else they going to talk about? What else they going to complain about? Who else they going to blame? There's a benefit. As strange as it is, there's a benefit to carrying that sack of rocks. So some people going back to that conversation, if they're carrying that sack of rocks and somebody tell them, hey, look in that bag. You got rocks. And he looks in the bag and he and he picks it back up. He if he's a masochist, like I'm saying. He could say, huh, hmm, I'm carrying this heavy bag of rocks. What do you carry? You're not carrying anything. Oh, you expect me to be able to help you? Pfft, I can't help you. I need help. Look at this bag of rocks I'm carrying. I walk around. You can see somebody that need that he could just say, uh, he could say, he could make up all kinds of shit. You know what? I'm carrying this bag of rocks and you're not. I should get privilege over you because you're not carrying any rocks what's up with all the people not carrying rocks they got not carrying rock privilege that's not fair i've been carrying these rocks my whole life you don't know what it's like to carry rocks you have the privilege of no rocks not me i got the pain of carrying these rocks and you'll never know what it's like and you pick up the rocks again right ah oh, i just hurt my back man i need some help People should help me. Somebody should help me because I got pain in my back because of these rocks. <laughs> you see how retarded being a victim is? But it's benefit. There's a benefit to it because people that, that's pleasing to some people, right? Granted that you look at it and you recognize, boy, I'm not a victim. I'm stupid for carrying this. It's just going to drop away. It's just going to drop away. <laughs> anyway, man, so I, I was just having fun with you. But... One of the things I think we got to do is just be a little bit lighter with ourselves. Be a little bit lighter. Drop that bag of rocks and allow life to unfold. Everything's unfolding perfectly for me. Everything's unfolding perfectly for me. Everything's unfolding. Everything's unfolding. Everything's unfolding perfectly for me. Just say that. Sing that to yourself. <laughs> Sing that little song to yourself. And uh, and you re you'll see it. You see, it's true. All right, man. Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip 
from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.